figure out what is its meaning. What does this mean and what is it? So team member is Erika and Keisuke and Takuma. Please come here and do your presentation now. traditional shoes called waraji and waraji are made of rice straw as a room outside shoes and we wore them until World War II and in fact my grandmother wore waraji when she went to school these days waraji are made of fabrics like this as a room shoes so we decided to hold a workshop to make this kind of room shoes walaji. But why walaji? I will tell you about my story. Since I was an elementary school student, I'm really interested in working with developing countries people. So when I entered my university, I became a member of the student run organization. And our project is to make walaji in Bangladesh and export them to Japan to help the people who has no jobs in Bangladesh. But why Bangladesh? And Bangladesh people eat rice, so there is a lot of rice straw to make walaji. But we had a big one problem. We didn't know how to make walaji, even though we were Japanese. We can see uh, walaji at the special occasions, uh, some traditional festivals. And there is just few place or few people that can make waraji now. So we decided to visit the countryside and there was uh, old ladies who can make waraji. And it, during visiting them, it was very good opportunity for us to think about what is Japanese culture? and we could rediscover that Japanese culture. Now we are in the US, so we think we want to share my rediscovery of Japanese culture with a lot of people who are in America too. And it would be a good chance to think about Japanese culture deeply. That's why we decided to hold a workshop of making this baraji. By the way, our team name is Wara Lai. And Wara has two meanings in Japanese. First is rice straw. Waraji are made of rice straw. And second is smile. So we want to make people smile through our workshop. To do our workshop, we set two goals. First, to gather people. Second, it satisfies our participants. As she said, I think you can understand the reason why we start our project. Next, I'll show you what we did for achieving two goals for this project. First goal is gathering many people. In our workshop, we had to get 35 participants in order to achieve the program's goal of $500 profit. At first, we used the Facebook page for advertisement because it is easy to announce our workshop event and show details and pictures our, about our project to a lot of people. Yes, we made it. And in first workshop, 436 people saw our Facebook page, but just 10, just only 10 people joined the first workshop. It means, in simple calculation, if we had to get 35 participants, how many people do we have to have <coughs> the Facebook page? The number is this, 1,526 people. 
what's a bummer? What's a huge number, right? <laughs> so we we are. It is too difficult to do that in only two or three weeks. And it is true that Facebook is very useful to advertisers. However, we notice that using only Facebook is impersonal way. What does it mean? It means not. Oh, not all viewers can understand our, our workshop outline by looking only at Facebook page. So, we shifted the means of advertisement to promote more personal, emotional action. For example, we spoke about our project to uh, our friends, our teacher, and to some Japanese organizations such as JSA, to near schools, and to students who take Japanese language class. And this was done directly, and sometimes face to face. Actually, this method shows us using only Facebook page is impersonal. <coughs> and so this method, we were able to make people understand what Walajio and our project is by talking to people face to face. As a result of this realization, in, unfortunately, we couldn't get certified participants. However, we gathered 25 participants and $350 profit. So through this project, we just learned the most effective way to have people join our event is not impersonal, impersonal action such as showing a lot of information over the internet, but emotional, impersonal, sorry, emotional, personal, personal promotion, uh, such as talking to people face to face. And the next, the other goal is satisfying our participant. At first, how do we check that? How do we evaluate that? So we use a questionnaire. After making Walaji, we had the business, we had the participants evaluate by five levels their degree of satisfaction with our workshop. By the way, in first workshop, for satisfying the visitors, we invited two people to help our workshop, such as teaching the visitors how to make Walaji, because we are only three people. Additionally, we made a handwritten explanation which helps the visitors learn how to make Walaji easily. After that, in first workshop, 10 people joined. And in five levels evaluation, one person marked the two, and four people marked the four, five people marked the five. So we got the good score in first workshop. However, as you see, one person marked the two. So we had to include this point. So we decided our goal is have all participants mark the file. According to this questionnaire, the reason of such low scores were due to neither not due to either not having enough time to a pair of shoes, and it's too difficult to make volaji. And the workshop room was a little cold. So, okay, so we felt strongly that due to such an insufficient preparation for Walaji workshop that we had to, we should try to arrange a better environment. For example, using a heater <laughs> and uh, making a picnic sheet on the floor and uh, especially increasing, increasing the number of, number of helpers as well, and uh, as well as holding a lecture for them to discuss the discuss more and the most difficult point of our process in order to improve and the helpers and our teaching skill. This action, each action looks like very small thing, right? However, we believe that doing such a small thing one by one leads our goal. After that, in final workshop, 11 people joined. And how many people marked the file? Yes, 
eight people mark the five, and three people mark the four. So we strongly believe that this evaluation show that we could provide not only services in creating a pair of their own shoes, but also good time and good environment that participants can enjoy. This is our project result. So next, TACMA showed <coughs> our lessons of our, from our project. OK, can I speak here? <laughs> here <in my> space. <laughs> Thank you, Keisuke. As he said, we tried hard to improve and succeed our project. But to be honest, if we had taken a different path, we could improve our project more. We could gather people more. So what could be the different part? First, first, we could take action more rapidly. Actually, we spend too much time to and for planning before we take action. Second, we misunderstood the cultural differences. We started to run this workshop as if we were in Japan. So some unexpected problems will happen while we are managing workshop. OK, there is a funny episode. When we went to the community center at a workshop day, the center was closed. <laughs> Even we booked the room for a workshop. Can you believe it? <laughs> we were really surprised. And so we shouted like, Hello! Hey, we are here! Please open the door, please! <laughs> Nobody answered. <laughs> a few minutes later, fortunately, we met a lady who just happened to come out from another building of the community center. And we said like this, Oh, next, excuse us. Oh, we booked a room in this in this building. So, but you know, this building is out of service. What should we do? And she said like this. Oh, I didn't know that. And I was like, Oh, this is a cultural difference. <laughs> in addition, she asked us, How much is the rental fee? Even she was a worker. Of course, we wanted to say like one dollar. Yeah, it's a good deal, right? <laughs> but don't worry, we pay like the. Through these experiences, we began to understand the cultural differences more and more. Okay, to sum up, these lessons are what we learned. As Takuma mentioned, we had two lessons. <coughs> but I think a lot of people enjoyed our workshop and they could rediscover the Japanese <coughs> culture. And a lot of people said it was very interesting to know how to make warazi. Um, this old lady who joined our workshop with her granddaughter said she really enjoyed our workshop and she said she will try to make a waraji with her granddaughter again at her house. And this guy, he's Japanese, and also he is here today. He, yeah, <laughs> thank you for coming. And he made a pair of waraji at our workshop. And he said he will give them to his American friends and introduce waraji as Japanese culture. To be honest, uh, before I started our, work, our project, I was so nervous and I worried about lots of things. But when I heard these kind of comments, I'm really, really happy. And I think a lot of people enjoyed our workshop and enjoyed talking with pe people during making warazi. And I saw a lot of smile. We hope that a 
A lot of people continue making waraji with their smile. This is our project, and this is my story. Thank you.